Hey, this is Dan from Gorse Vale Hops coming back at you again. This time, we've got the epic story involving skiing, smashing fingers, glycol, CO2. I've got Heather from Tidal Town. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got Christina from Tidal Town Brewery. Heather, who used to be brewer at Tidal Town, now head brewer at Pabst. Um, but this starts as a ski weekend. I'm going to start with you. Well, I mean, so. Well, we're not allowed to go skiing together anymore, but when the weekend first started, uh, it was, Heather, get as much as you can done so we can go up to Mount Bohemia, which if anybody knows, the best skiing in the Midwest, best powder. Um, and it started off with keg as much beer as you can so we can get the hell out of town and get out of, you know, get up to the UP. So Heather had to keg off about 45 half barrels um, each Every like two was like a half hour process, so you could do two and a half hour. So she, the girl is just ripping barrels like from one room to the next. Wait, like. this is you and your staff of 20? Uh, no, there like were actually three. five of us yeah. at the time, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right, all right. We still operate very small. I mean, the, the crew there at Title Town is, you know, seven or eight brewery team members. Uh -huh. So they, they do a lot of work and they work hard. All right, nonetheless, this was an epic job you're trying to get done. Yeah. So you could go to the UP. Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, that's odd. Let me repeat that. So you could go to the UP. I love it up there. I don't know. <laughs> it's so amazing. Come on, it's it's incredible. Like we, I I remember like looking at her and being like, okay, so you're gonna do this. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna pack. I'm not gonna drink any beer. I'm just gonna go home and pack, and then I'll see you in like four hours. Wait, 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 wait. This is supposed to be truth, not drink any. Well, but there had been other times where she's found me and I've drank too much beer. <laughs> and I've... Okay. All right, so you're waiting for the phone call We're to go ski. Right track. We are on the path to success. And I go to bed thinking I'm going to wake up in four hours. We're going to leave at 4 a.m., 3 a.m. And it's going to be fantastic. And I get a text from Heather and I look at it and I'm just like, oh, you're at the ER? Like Heather's in the ER. She'd smash her finger like her poor little baby pinky. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I reached the end of like what I had been waiting for and working, you know, eight to ten hours or whatever um, to keg all of this beer off. And I reached the end of this whole process where you are loading kegs into the cooler. And I got to the she end. She had to triple stack. That's how crazy it was. We were triple yeah. stacking kegs, yeah. so well, it wasn't like a good idea. It only, I mean, that doesn't happen any, anymore, thankfully. So I'm in there. I'm stacking, <laughs> stacking kegs of beer, and I get to the end of it, and I end up, like, having a keg come down, smash my finger. Uh, it was still hanging on, thankfully, so I still... Wait, the keg or your finger? The finger. My finger. There. Look. Yeah, I have it. There you go, there's um, the finger. Yeah, so um, my manager drove me into the ER and uh, we got it all fixed up. X-rays came back looking great. I asked if I could go skiing. They highly recommended that I didn't. So you didn't? No, I did. We did. <laughs> well, no. No, we didn't ski, we did. but we tried. <laughs> but we tried, yeah. So the deed was done. I sent the message saying, hey, you're still going to pick me up. We're, we're done with work. I'm checking out for the weekend. Let's head up north. All right, so you pick her up, you're heading up north. So we, I am like, all right, you're absolutely insane. Like, but okay, like, you're my best friend, we're gonna do it. So I pile into her Subaru, and I look over, she's got like her hand resting on a pillow, but it's kind of like, got like a weird heartbeat, like going to, um, and we get, we, we're heading up past, we're north of Houghton, we're into the Keweenaw, this is like remote, remote area. And we are so close, we can taste it. Like everybody's waking up, the sun's coming up, the powder's glistening, the energy drinks are flowing, everybody's like ready to go. And then we stopped. Not because we wanted to, but because the car literally stopped moving. It did. And we had to park in some random uh, Michigan residence driveway. But thank God we broke down where we did because there are not many places that have population like here and there. Like, had it been any further south, and we would have been... Uh, okay, so there's no AAA, there's no one to come get you. There's no one helping us. No. We called, like, Jim Bob's towing out of Houghton, and he's like, so are you in Houghton Lake, or are you in Houghton? I'm like, I don't know, is there a difference? Like, I'm in Houghton, please come, like, I'm... Please, please describe your surroundings. There's a tree, and a moose, and some snow. Oh, so that's the beautiful and part. A lake. Yeah, a big lake. I mean, we are on the... 
the bay of like the Keweenaw Peninsula, which is one of the most remote and beautiful locations on that lake, I think, that exists. So yeah. if we were to break down somebody somewhere, that's that was exactly where you wanted yeah. to go. Yeah. So we we finally get a tow. We like break down, we're like, I need a tow. The guy caught me peeing in his yard. It was like <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> That did happen. Uh, yeah, it really did. <laughs> Heather had to watch one direction. She couldn't watch one direction, and then he came from the other end, and it, oh, it was embarrassing. So anyway. Okay, eventually we're going to get to the brewing part. But. So we're stranded in the UP. Nobody rents cars. Nobody fixes cars. Nobody does anything until Monday. So Monday morning, now after th two days, three days, of stranded in the UP, uh -huh. and like I said, Kate Kiwana Brewing Company, and we were like the weary travelers. They we like took to us in. It. Yeah, we wouldn't have made it through without them. I mean, they were very hospitable. We They're learned like, a oh, lot. Do you guys need a ride anywhere? Do you need a place to stay? And we're like, we're okay, we're okay. Okay, one more time, the name of that company? Kiwana Brewing Company. They took very good care of us. Yes, thank you, Margie. Thank you, Paul. Um, but they, we finally rented a van and we're heading back to the brewery. And remind you, we're in remote UP. Okay, so skiing is finally out of the question. Oh, All right, smash down. finger, driving in the middle of the night. Lots of beer. That's what we wanted, I guess, in the long run. It took breaking down in the middle of nowhere to finally convince you this was a bad idea. And also, it, it, it was the first time that I got to see one of these combined mash whirlpool kettles. So we learned. It was educational. It was incredible. I, I mean, you mash in on the top, there's screens, and you ladder down, but then they pump the beer back into the lower vessel of the original mash tun, and they whirlpool it and send it off to the fermenter. Like, KBC. Okay. Kiwana Brewing Company has one. It's 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 cool. So yeah, so this is all educational, but now it's time to go. Like it's Monday morning, time to get back to reality. How else are we gonna get out of here? We rent a van, a really terrible, shitty van, um, and we get back to Green Bay. And now finally the Wi-Fi. We're finally now getting emails and text messages yeah. that we had missed out this entire time. Thankfully, because they were all horrendous. And we get a message, and Heather's in the front seat. She's got newly dressed bandages on her wound. We had to redress, like, all the time. And I'm like, oh, my God, Heather. She's like, what? I'm like, you don't even want to know. I'm like, apparently the glycol tank has completely emptied. Oh, shit, it gets worse. Like, I'm reading this email, like, there's no CO2. The entire, the brew pub has been evacuated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're like, yeah. what happened? <laughs> yeah, so uh, apparently, um, you know, you have your bulk tanks of CO2 and things like that that get refilled um, weekly. Um, when the company came to do that, I'm not going to say who it was, uh, when they came to refill the bulk tank, uh, they had a... A line break. Yeah, the so, vinyl line burst. Yeah. So it and starts it, flailing well, around. Well, it throws up, and it's solid, like it, like a, yeah. like a, like a bat, you know. Yeah. And it's just like, so the whole restaurant, the whole brew pub is now filling with CO2. They have to evacuate the brew pub. <laughs> oh my God! So they evacuate everyone. But while everyone is gone, this now rocket ship, like this whipping lasso, pierces our bulk glycol tank. And drains the. No, that's not how it went. It pierced the. It, it hit a fermenter. Heather, you explain what happened. Yeah. So maybe some more detail. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it was a very standard thing. We would have it done like weekly. Like yeah. Um, yeah. Bulk tank. CO2 bulk tank needed to be refilled, and um, they come and they do that. But because of like unfortunate weather situations, things were. It was were, super cold. It yeah. was freezing. Yeah. So they had a line break. And this line breaks loose at pretty much the worst time ever. Um, and it starts flailing and ends up filling the entire pub with CO2, which needed to be evacuated. So, so high pressure, super cooled CO2 is spraying out of this hose, yeah. flailing rapidly. So then they end up having uh, an inner wall on the glycol uh, fermenter, or on the fermenter. Uh, leak into beer. So we've got glycol then at that point because of the flailing CO2 line. Um, now it's a completely lost batch of beer. I mean, still food safe, tastes a little sweet. Uh, <laughs> that would be the pink propylene glycol. <laughs> yeah. um, but also drains our entire bulk tank of glycol. Yeah, so the entire reservoir ends up hitting the drains uh, in the beer cellar. And when we pull into Tidal Town, oh. we're already like, 
So we Hats pull pulled down the bridge low. and we can see a title town like in the horizon. And I look at Heather and I'm like, I'm gonna puke. And she's like, what? I'm like, not hungover anymore, but I'm gonna vomit. And she's like, why? I'm like, this is the like the worst. Because David's like, emergency brewery meeting right away and we're like I'm gonna throw up this what could be so... worse than what we just had happen <laughs> yeah, like, like, <laughs> how could it get any worse so and we pull into Title Town with like this feeling of literally like yeah. vomit not and good induced feeling not good and the first thing that I see is Danny who is one of our cellarmen he's rolling off like a 50 gallon drum, drum of glycol, glycol. Yeah. And then we the back of the truck and I'm like, oh my gosh, what it's, is it's happening? It's as bad as we thought it was. And then we walk into the brewery and Dave looks at the two of us and he's like, wow, you two look like shit. And we're like, yes, we know we look, it's been a horrible weekend. And he's like, well, it's about to get worse. Yeah. So, well, okay. How long were you guys down? We were, actually, no, we just lost a batch of beer and we got that bulk tank refilled and we were back up and running in three days. You just had this sickly sweet smell around for a little oh, bit until you got a batch we didn't serve. Everybody yeah, yeah. everybody got to get a keg of that batch to take with them. So. But it could have been <laughs> oh god, yeah. It was, it was pretty pretty much icing on the cake at that time. Alright, well thank you for yeah, that's I, that's by far the epic story. I don't think anyone's gonna top that one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well night's young. A lot That's of, true. There's a lot of beer to be brewed, so a lot of uh, mishaps can still happen. All right. Thank you very much, Heather Christina. Yeah.